In this short tutorial, I will show you how, from the beginning to the end, generate DSM and Orthophoto from the UAS data in Agisoft Metashape Professional. So we start with the empty window. Here's where our model is going to show up. And here are our two tabs, Reference tab and Workspace tab. Uh, First, we're going to start with loading our photos, and I would like you to sh see, like, we work right now in the local coordinate system. We don't want that. For the aerial data, we want to want, uh, work in some kind of the known reference system, maybe latitude, longitude, altitude. You can check, change it here for WGS84, which is uh, longitude, latitude, altitude, or you can search for the reference system that your data is in. Uh, so we start workflow is something that we're going to be pressing a lot. So here is our steps, step by step, what we're going to do. First, we're going to add photos from the folder. I'm adding all of them. These photos are down sampled, so the processing will go faster. Uh, you can see here that the positions of the cameras are not loaded. Also, you can't see the cameras here. It's because this type of uh, UAS that was flown, it's a Trimble UAS, it does not save the information about the picture localization in the exit file. It does save it in the separate log file. So I need to log it from the log. I'm double checking latitude, longitude, altitude, yes. And I have the rotation, I want to save uh, to load it with the rotation. In this, and right now we can see the grid here, or our photos are located uh, somewhere in within the reference system. So this is the center of the photo. The next step is to align those photos. Uh, so the ge generic preselection takes much more time because it looks, for example, for this photo, for tie points in uh, all the photos. The reference per selection has a preference for the photos that are in the vicinity, so around, it's looking uh, more locally. Um, so we can use the, uh, if we have ground control points to um, optimize the alignment, we can use lower uh, alignment or a medium one, like in my case, I'm gonna be using medium. Uh, it's going to take uh, some time depending on the resolution of your photos and also on the number of the photos and of course on the on your computer performance. Uh, so in my case, uh, because the uh, photos, it, we have just 70 photos, 78, um, and they are downsampled, so it just took a couple seconds. So we can see all our uh, photos are aligned. Don't worry about the bounding box color, it's, it can be changed. It's just my preference to have it green. Um, bounding box is um, to indicate what area or what points, you can see here the sparse point cloud, what points will be taken into consideration in further processing. So I want to move, rotate. Here you can rotate region, move the region. So I want to rotate it a little bit with the ball. So it will just have all the photos. Okay. You can see here uh, what's important. The red is the bottom. So the red is supposed to be underground, uh, the base. You we can see here that other photos, the all our points are within, um, within the bounding box. Okay. So the next step is to load our ground control points Open. and in this case I have tab here I have just latitude longitude and altitude of course there is no rotation angle for the ground control points I have just three for this flight it is optimal to have at least five um, but this is just for display so I will do it uh, faster and you also can do it faster in um, on your uh, computers uh, just with a, a sample data. Here I press yes to all because I want them to be, and now if there is a time, I have a separate uh, video on how to 
uh, locate uh, the ground control point. So I'm going to pause it uh, here and I'm going to indicate it on all the photos. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to do I filter photos by marker. I will start with the sixth one. And I'm going to move this little flame, I think it's a flame, to the center of my ground control point. And I'm going to do it with all the photos that I have. So I'm done with locating all my ground control points. You can see here, I've located them on over 20 pictures each because we had a really um, significant overlap, like I think 80% uh, side overlap and uh, forward overlap too. Uh, so my next step would be for optimizing alignment. You he you have uh, here this magic wand here. So what I do, I check all of the boxes. There are different coefficients uh, associated with the optics of the camera. Uh, and I press OK. And now uh, our all uh, the whole point cloud, the sparse point cloud is adjusted based on the these ground control points. You could you can see how it changed here. I was showing you before the error was about like for 30, 40 meters. And here we have 0 0.001, so it's like less than a centimeter. Um, so what's our next step? remember not to realign the photos after you optimize the alignment. Next step is usually the most time consuming uh, step. So you need to make sure that you don't ever, ever use the ultra high setting because it's just going to crash for you. Uh, we're going to use the medium setting in this case. Um, here you have the depth filtering. Uh, mild is for the, for the models or for the text for some very complicated textures you don't want to um, uh, filter all the outliers we're gonna just do the moderate and we definitely want to calculate the point color so I'm gonna click OK and it's gonna take me probably a minute so I'm gonna be right back I'm done with the processing and here I can activate and see my sparse, sparse point uh, sparse cloud changing into dense point cloud so this is a sparse one this is a dense one our next step with the workflow is to connect all these points that we created into triangles so create build a mesh a triangulated network we want to use as a source data the dense cloud so sur surface type we want a high field because we are working with aerial data. If we would be working with a model, uh, we would use the 3D and that takes much, much, much longer. Then here is the face count. I like to have a really beautiful model, so I like to keep the face count high. So I would do even the custom, maybe five millions, but um, in uh, I want to have the, enabled uh, interpolation and of course calculate the ver vertex colors. I click OK and it's going to take a little bit less time. I'm going to post below what's what are the parameters of my computer uh, that it works so quickly on my computer. Um, and this is ready. So this is active now. I can see a model here. Let us look. You can see how the f uh, the trees look like towers because all the only data we have is about the surface of the crowns. We don't have any data from below because we have flown just so high. So the next uh, step is to build the texture. Um, the mapping. Uh, I want to create auto photo or an adaptive auto photo. So I'm going to click that one. Adaptive Autophoto takes the flat surfaces um, and, and uh, applies different algorithms to the flat surfaces into the nearly vertical um, uh, surfaces. So I'm going to click OK and it's all going to take probably a couple seconds. So the texture is ready and what is left now is 
you go to the DM and put Auto Mosaic. If you're working in the demo mode, you don't have a license, it's not going to be active because you are, you need to be able to save files in order to build the, G, uh, the DM in Auto Mosaic. So I am choosing my own coordinate system. I'm in North Carolina, so this is 3358 at the EPSG. And you need to remember that whatever coordinate system you use for your DSM, the same co coordinate system need, will need to be used for the audio photo. And our resolution is here 25 centimeters, so about 10 inches. Generating DM, it's gonna take probably a couple seconds. Ready. And next, I will build auto mosaic. As you can see, I have no option to change the coordinate system because the only uh, only what I have uh, is what I've chosen for the DSM. So yes, the surface is the DM and the mosaic, and I just click OK. It's going to probably take a little tiny bit longer than for the um, uh, for the DSM because the resolution is higher. And now in my workspace panel, I can see the generated results. So this is the D, uh, DEM and the ortho mosaic with the seam lines that I've created. Uh, the next part, what I want to do is export all the files. So you go to File, Export, and uh, here we can explain the, then export the point cloud, the model that we've built previously, that you can also upload it to uh, one of the uh, what one of the uh, online web servers that store uh, your uh, maps. I use Sketchfab, so I want to export and export Auto Mosaic, export the DM, and chain and save it as whatever um, whatever extension you need. Uh, what's really uh, really cool about the MetaShape, it generates you the processing report. It's really great to have it. This is like we are sample. sample. And you will see uh, it will create the PDF. That will tell us a lot about our processing. This is my report. Shows the overview of the auto photo. Shows what was the overlap. How many camera stations? How many? Uh, how many your pictures were aligned? The camera calibration report. The camera locations with errors. Camera orientation. The ground control points here with also with the error we just had three it's really not advisable to have it like uh, what we had in one line it's best to have them on the near the corners of the uh, area and then one in the middle and it also shows us the digital elevation model and our processing parameters with the times for processing so uh, fortunately, it was not very long. If you have a lot of photos and your computer is not as fast, it can take you hours and hours. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, good luck with working with um, Agisoft Metashape.